Fanatics debuted in 2019 with six members, with their first song, Sunday. Before that, they had a subunit, Flavor, and debuted with Milkshake. Lastly, they came back earlier this year in 2020 with Vavi Girl, with two new members. Now they have a total of eight members. I have six of their first album, two of their latest album, two posters on my wall, postcards, photo cards, Lion is my lock screen image, and I added English subtitles to their subunit videos and to a few of their latest videos on YouTube. <laughs> Fanatics is one of my favorite girl groups that debuted last year and one of the reasons why I'm even learning Korean. No one really knows them, but they have a small, dedicated fan base, and I'm always looking forward to them. Unlike most people who are covering this particular story, they aren't a true fan, so to speak. But are people trying to hop on to the hype train because it's a hot topic at the moment? It'll die out in a few weeks for them, and they'll just pretend it never happened. But an incident like this will affect true fans like me for a long time. On September 7th, Fanatics held a giveaway event to their fans. Here, the four members on screen are wearing short skirts and shorts, where most of their legs are exposed. And in some shots, you can see underneath. A member off screen offers a purple jacket to two of them. Later, that same member offers another jacket, but it is quickly taken away after a small argument that takes place off screen. Afterwards, you can hear two loud slap noises followed by four members looking a bit nervous, and then silence. The stream continues for the next 30 minutes without incident. The argument was about why the member off screen was covering their legs because the cameraman was trying to show it. In general, it's courteous to cover girl group members' legs during a broadcast, but on a V-Live stream, anything goes, no different from Twitch or Africa TV. So it's generally fine. However, to be punished? Exploited? That's ridiculous. There's no doubt there was a sexual harassment case based on the argument, but there was also a physical harassment incident here as well. Here, we're going to investigate the numerous theories and find out who was the perpetrator and who was the victim. Before we continue with the theories, we're going to lay out everyone who was present at the time. On screen, we have Via, Chaelin, Dooley, and Lion. Off screen, we have Yunhe, Shika, Dua, and the cameraman. <laughs> So the first theory is no one got slapped. It was just like the sound of a plastic water bottle snapping or something, right? But I don't know if you know how to read body language or read the room, but it's clear some altercation took place based on the on-screen member reactions. Via pretends nothing is happening but looks around nervously. Chaelin stops speaking mid-sentence and awkwardly smiles. Dewey immediately reacts when there is arguing. Lion looks at her members awkwardly, and there's also complete silence for a few seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure someone got hurt. Theory 2, a female staff member was slapped, not a group member. Most v -Life streams are personal and accomplished with no additional crew. All you really need is a camera or phone and hit stream and you're on v -Life connected with fans. To be honest, for being a small group from an unknown agency, I don't think Fent can even afford additional crew to do consistent live streams. Also, 
We'll go into more details later, but this is actually Shika's sleeve. The basis of the argument was about covering the legs, which this person did. Theory 3. Yunhe was the victim. It is Yunhe's jacket that is placed on Dewey and Lion. You can see and hear Dewey say, This is Yunhe's school, right? For those who don't know, Yunhe debuted in 2019, but took a break this year to attend school. It's implied that Yunhe was the victim because this is Yunhe's jacket, as she must have been the one who placed it on them. However, Yunhe is not wearing a white sleeve as we see here. This is actually Yunhe because this right here are certain things only Yunhe would wear. Yunhe usually wears a hairband around her wrist. Also, in this instance, I've seen Yunhe wear this sweater before. There are pictures from the official Instagram on the Fent Fanatics Instagram account with Yunhe wearing this exact same sweater. Alright, you caught me. You can say that Dua has worn this sweater too, but that is not Dua. I'll come back to this later. And lastly, Yunhe is speaking after the slap. I don't know about you, but if someone slapped me, I sure as hell wouldn't be talking normally afterwards, no matter how professional I could be. <laughs> So Yunhe is just explaining how she got the jacket. So conclusion, it is not Yunhe. Theory 4, Shika was the victim. This is most likely Shika based on the members' conversations. Yunhe, Shika. For those who don't know, Shika is the leader of Fanatics. So generally, it's understandable that it's her responsibility to take care of her members and look after them, which is why it is highly likely she is the one who offered those jackets to them in the first place. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Shika. Theory 5. The CEO was the cameraman. The cameraman can explain the technical details of the events. In this particular stream, they were doing a giveaway event, and the cameraman can fill in the details, the specific details on who it's going to be sent to, what's going to happen, how they're going to give it away. I don't think a normal cameraman can explain that. <laughs> <laughs> also, if we approach this logically, no one else would be able to get away with this. If a basic cameraman would physically assault any girl group member, I highly doubt he would be able to get away without the girls saying anything. Thus, the only one who would have any authority to hurt a member without any of them protesting is the CEO himself. So conclusion, it is highly likely the CEO is the cameraman and the one who hurt Chica. Fent issued an apology letter later stating the matters have been dealt with, however I am still suspicious. If the issue we see here was the camera revealing their legs, were there more instances of it before on V-Life? Yes, it has been going on for several months and we completely missed it. <laughs> Wow. 
저 사람이 예쁘다고 해주면 저기 있다가 호드는 한순간에 저를 버릴 수 있는 아이라서 제가 항상 잘해야 돼요 호드한테 Okay, you could argue that they're just trying to show the dog here, right? Because this V live stream is actually about the dog. There are even two streams that begin with showing most of their legs. And to those who are doubting there's nothing wrong with the provocative camera angles, there are also several live streams where it shows most of the upper body and are not provocative. <laughs> Fortunately, Dua is their star member and underage, so I doubt there would be provocative angles for her. And to those who are claiming that this isn't anything new and that there are other girl groups that are being taken advantage of like this on streams, here are several examples from other girl groups I follow with no provocative camera shots during their V-Live streams. <laughs> <laughs> these members are completely fine on their own. It's clear these camera angle positions with fanatics are intentional to take advantage of them. I guess you could argue that maybe they want to show off their legs, you know, like do sexy concept or something. But for the duration of the September 7th stream, Dewey and Lion had their legs crossed the entire time, when before they were comfortable and weren't paying any attention to it. It's heartbreaking, but I am no longer supporting this group. I'm leaving not just because of this one particular incident, but because there are several examples of it before. I cannot support a company that takes advantage of their members. So the posters are going down, the albums are going to be stored away. I will always support the girls individually, but I cannot support this company. I really hope the girls will continue to stay strong and healthy and have the courage to walk away when they're being taken advantage of. It's not going to be easy, especially with what's going on with the world right now. Small agencies are shutting down and this is their last hope to make their dreams come true. But this is not the only way. I would rather have them disband and find something new and better than to continue to be treated like this. Fanatics fans, we unfortunately do not have a fan name yet, but I know you're there. I presented my case. Now you make your decision. Will you continue to support Fent? Or will you protest to show that this is not okay? We've seen what has happened to other girl groups, so I hope we don't make the same mistake again. I wish for the best for all the members and their decisions. For Dua, Shika, Chiai, Yunhe, Via, Chaelin, Lion, and Dewey. Thank you. 
엄마 아빠 너무 너무 보고 싶고 不知道你们很困难这样一直支持我的梦很不容易所以我很对不起你们可是我希望有一天可以成功 고등학교 때부터 연습생 생활을 엄청 오랫동안 했었는데 어, 중간에 우여곡절이 진짜 많았어요 어, 팀이 아예 없어지기도 하고 더 나아가서는 회사 자체가 없어지기도 하고 그러면서 많은 일들을 겪다 보니까 스스로 음, 자존감이나 자신감이 좀 많이 떨어지는 거예요 아, 내가 스, 너무 부족해서 이 길을 하기에는 막힘이 되게 많고는 다제 탓으로 돌렸던 것 같아요 모든 걸 그래서 저는 원래 이 꿈을 잠깐 포기하기도 했었어요 너무 어렸을 때부터 꿈꿨던 일이어서 결국에는 다시 돌아오게 되더라고요